Hello, today we're looking at these quite boring coloured boxes from FreeSky, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find it, find that little bell icon and click on it, it'll tell you when I'm uploading stuff. What have we got here? It is the new R9 system, also known as the R9M Lite Pro. Um, it's basically for the same interface that's currently been used on the FreeSky R9 Lite and the X Lite and is the very thin module bay like that, not the larger JR one that's used on the original Tenarianus X9D. I actually had this for a while, but the software really wasn't there on the radio to support it, so I've held off using it, but now it's here, uh, let's talk about it, because I used the original R9 system for a little while, and I kind of got uh, comfortable with it eventually. I found really weird RSSI where it would drop really, really low, but previously I've been doing some stuff with you know decent range, using flex that seems to work quite well uh, just as soon as you get used to this the weird rssi dropping very low on situations just the fact you can fly it pretty much down to zero and it and it reacts okay so i've got on a couple of quads still on the wall and that seems to be fine freeze guy actually did promise uh i say promise they told me there'd be an over the air update that was going to come and that would bring it more into line with the thing that Crossfire does from TBS. So when you upload new firmware to its module, it will just say, hey, there little receiver, I've got new firmware for you and zap it down over the air. Really clever stuff. With, <laughs> with the FreeSky stuff, you literally had to desolder it from your quad, get it out and resolder the lines on so you could plug it in the back of the radio and, and put the new firmware on and then put the module firmware on separately. It's all a little bit of a pain. Now there was a problem with over the air, um, updates and that was that the original hardware couldn't support it. Um, I think this was down to the fact it didn't basically have enough flash memory on it so it couldn't have its own version of the firmware there and a bootloader and be able to zap something over the top of it. I think that's my non my non technical attempt at a technical uh, explanation. So they've come up with all new receivers and hardware and, and modules um, which you know I think might upset a few people because when they bought into the original system they didn't expect a new one to come along like a year later and say oh yeah yeah that's that old stuff's dead to us now here's the new stuff of course FreeSky have also been touting their access system uh, like there's no tomorrow so these support that now um, but yeah let's get on so what I've got here I've got the module and I've got in these ones a couple of the, re the receivers the over the air R9 M ones but Let's talk about the module first. This is the R9M Lite Pro. Um, it's got a little access badge on it. And what you get in the box are two things. One of which is a little bit of a pain, uh, one of which isn't. This is the little module itself, a tiny little thing, but uh, it's saying it can go all the way up to one watt. So the normal 10 milliwatts, 100, 250, 500, and then the adaptive power, the flex power, which goes between 10 and one watt depending on the signal it needs. Uh, you get this uh, Super 8 antenna with it which is nice because previously you got this awful Omni one which was terrible. The problem for me is they have sent me the 900 megahertz version of the antenna. Not a problem in the module, I can change that between 900 and 868 or I should be able to anyway. 868 in, in the country I'm in, uh, the UK, is what we need to use because 900 uses part of the phone system. Um, but obviously if I'm running 868 on, a, on an antenna built for 900 it's going to not be as good. I don't know how bad it will be. Um, I mean I'm not doing any super long range but I, I guess we'll find out. I've also got my own Super 8 which works uh, on 868 probably so I can always swap that round. But same problem with the R9MMs. These, this is what the R9MM OTA looks like uh, and again it comes with a, a nice antenna with uh, the sort of semi-rigid things which is really nice to fix into your quad. That's a big plus from last time and you'll see it's got the little blue thing on it which means it is tuned for 900 megahertz. Uh, again a pain, I can take it off via the little mini um, UFL connector and change to a new one but I might, I might see how this goes. I'm interested to see how bad it is tuned for 868 when it's on 900. Uh, which kind of crazy thing to do, but um, I didn't want to take everything apart. But the other thing you get uh, with the receiver itself 
is a very simple one page sheet of instructions, which looks very similar, but there is some stuff about the OTA function which I haven't read yet, which I will get there. Uh, and then you've got the, if you've ever had DR9 MM before, you've got these little connectors. So you might want to have actual connectors in these holes, or you might just want to solder straight on. I've generally soldered straight on. Uh, which won't be a bad thing now because if, if we've got the OTA stuff then that should work. But first off, a slight problem and it, it comes down to this sheet of instructions you get. Is this enough to tell us what we're doing? And I'll tell you the problem is when I first looked at my radio having updated to OpenZX 2.3. I'll show you what it is. Come down to close up with me. So this confused me at first. I've figured it out now and now it makes sort of sense, but um, it would have been nice just to have a little bit more documentation. And it was the problem I found whilst deciding which mode I wanted to use. If we look at the external um, options we have, now we're on 2.3, we have, there we go, R9M FCC, R9M Access, R9ML FCC, R9ML Access, and R9MLP FCC, R9MLP Access. The reason I was confused is I just couldn't work out what that, what each one meant. Was it a different mode or what? Obviously, I know the difference between like you know FCC and Access, but um, of course it's the type of module. So when it's saying R9M, it means this one, the big JI one. Even though this won't fit in, but I, you know, they also have Crossfire listed here, and that's the same sort of module. So maybe that's the reason. When it says R9ML, it's talking about the R9M light which is this, this is the original one, which only went up to 100 milliwatts. And finally, when it's talking about the R9 MLP, it means this guy that we're testing here on the back. So it wasn't clear to me, so I thought I'd mention it to you guys, just in case it wasn't clear to you. It is now and it feels quite obvious, but it wasn't at the time. Anyway, on with finding out how we actually uh, set this thing up. Okay, so here we are with a quad and we've just attached the little R9 receiver via the S bus input. People will probably ask, why are you using S bus? Why aren't you using F port? Um, because it was there and convenient. I'm going to do an F port one, but that's for the next build. Anyway, so what we should have been promised here is hey, we don't have to bind things, things just bind automatically. But not really the case. If we just plug in as is, you'll see we basically get this rapidly flashing red light which doesn't mean anything and what you have to do according to this small sheet of instructions is go into your model and go to reg for register i've got this set up just to explain external rf uh, r9 mlp because this is the r9m light pro using access and rx right, number one and yeah, you have to register the module, then you can bind it. How do you register the module? Well, aside from pressing that button, you have to power it on whilst pressing that button. Looks very much like a bind button, doesn't it? I have to say. Let's try it. Say RX name, hello. Registration is okay. So after this point, as I understand it, you can now bind it without having to press the bind button. So if we plug this in, we should be able to say bind. Waiting for RX. Nothing seems to be happening. Aha. So it's a case of turning it off and um, then doing the bind. Hello, bind successful. RF signal critical. Okay, which is bad, so it's saying it's one inch away from me. The RX is called hello, which is an interesting one. So options, we only seem to be able to change the power output, but we want to be able to change the frequency it's on. Well, it does tell me it's got an external module 1.1.1 FCC and 1.1.1 R9 Mini OTA. So need to see if we can actually update that. All right, back from a 
quick session of computer and I've got the firmware on and I think what happened is um, somebody, well, it was firmware installed with the FCC version so it didn't have the option. So when I opened up the zip file for the module and this is for version 112 there was the FCC, the Flex and the LBT so I think the, L the FCC was on there. I could do the LBT but I like the Flex better so let's try writing that to the module. So we're going to flash external module like this hopefully. It says it's writing. Quick look on the back. Yeah it's kind of flashing away a little bit. Not intensely flashing but flashing all the same. So of course after this the most exciting thing is to flash the receiver um, over the air. Okay, that flash is successful. Now we want to go ahead and flash our receiver. There seems to be a specific way of doing this, which is first you go and say, I would like to flash it. And I'm going to want the flex version. Long press, flash receiver OTA. Then it says waiting for RX. At this point, you power up the receiver. As soon as we plug in it went away. It's supposed to flash up with a thing that says select. At this point it's just stuck in this menu. Here's what should be happening. We say flash receiver, it says waiting for RX. We turn on the RX, we should get this little window. Instead, we just have that window completely disappear and we end up with nothing at all. Which makes it a bit difficult to get to these parts. Hmm. Well, you know something's gone wrong in the world when we've got a great big bundle of wires in the end of here and yeah I have got a secondary load of soldering in this receiver where I've connected a 5 volt ground and the yellow wire goes to the S port pad. Why is that? Why is it going here? It's because I'm going to have to flash it with the radio. Now I thought I must be doing something wrong. I sent a quick video of what I was doing to FreeSky and said this seems to be broken. Am I doing something wrong? Uh, and they're saying, hey, yes, we noticed this and we release a firmware for this transmitter to fix this issue. Thanks for pointing it out. So I was like, well, is, is OTA broken? Can I can I update with S-Port and then come back to OTA in another video? And then they said, OTA is not broken. This is the issue caused by the radio part. If you have the same update issue through the S-Port, please wait for the next firmware up update. And I was like, well, what is it then? So I, I said, just to clarify, when you say the radio part, is this the module firmware or the OpenTX firmware on the radio? And then they said, we will have a firmware update for the operating system. And then I said, the OS is in OpenTX? And at that point they stopped. Talking to FreeSky feels a little bit like we're trying to talk to a spaceship which is orbiting a large planet and basically goes behind the planet and you don't talk to them anymore. And then occasionally every couple of years it comes down and you get this very quick data burst. Uh, after which point you lose them again. All I've managed to establish with that is perhaps a combination of this radio with the module and the receiver. I don't know which bit. There's, they seem to be suggesting the radio. I don't know if it means this radio or the module is having a problem with OTA. Well, yeah, I agree with that, but I don't know where the fix is coming. Are we waiting for FreeSky to fix it in the module or are we waiting for OpenTX to fix it in the firmware? I don't know. In the meantime, as I mentioned, I've connected a standard servo lead up to ground, 5 volt and the uh, S-port pin. Uh, if you've got a, a radio like this with one of the smart port ports, you plug it in around this way. So with the signal wire on the right hand side. It is a different pin out to the old X9D at the back if you ever had one of those. Uh, this is a sort of a standard uh, pin layout so let me just do a quick flash here and we'll see if we can get this working so if we go into firmware we're going to r9 mm ota 112 we're long pressing and we're going to flash s port this time device reset and we can see we've got some flashing lights and we've got a progress bar there now i wouldn't have bothered 
flashing this at all. I'd have waited till OTA was working, but this came with the 915 firmware, which I can't use in the UK. And because it was only set to 915, um, I had to change it. I have to change it over to 866. 9, 915 in the UK is part of the uh, GSM phone network and I don't want to get messed up in that. So I have to flash it. Unfortunately, this means doing exactly what I didn't want to do and exactly what we were promised not to do, which is soldering in a wire for me to flash it. Hopefully after that point, I can desolder it. And next time I do an update on this, it will be OTA. So I'm going to have to come back for the over the air updates. It doesn't seem to be working at the moment. I don't know which bits to blame. Is it the radio? Is it the, the module? Is it the uh, receiver? So it, it might be the case of waiting and seeing uh, and I'll obviously revisit But Let's get this done and we'll plug it in and see what options we've got this time. Okay, we've reinstalled our receiver. So let's just power on and see what we get. RF signal critical. Apparently an RF signal critical is the first thing I get, which is always encouraging, isn't it? So, we are... RF signal critical. God, sharp. Let's go into receiver, see what our options are. Uh, RF signal critical. We've got an option to put F port on here. That's about it. What I should be able to do is, uh, presumably... RF signal critical. Rebind it. Do I have to just power on for that? I think I do. Because what I want it to do is ask me which frequency I want to use. So let's come up with the receiver. Oh, there we go. So flex 868, please. RF signal critical. It's Telemetry recovered. Still telling me the signal's critical. If I look at the range, it's saying the RSSI is zero. <laughs> that can't be good, can it? So what else we got there? We've got... Our other options are... Disable telemetry, which RF signal critical. might be an option at the moment. Maybe the problem here is here that I haven't got any telemetry. RF signal critical. Shut up, sensors. What I'm going to do is remove RF signal critical. all my sensors and try and get them back. Remove them all. And then let's discover new sensors. Okay, so now we've got an RSSI of 100 dB. It's a little bit, a little bit better, hopefully. So if I now go back to our main page, fingers crossed, it seems to have stopped whinging at me. Yeah, RSSI 100. That looks a bit better. So, um, what else we got here? What else can we do with this? Well, we should be able to set the power somewhere, shouldn't we? Options, set. So we've got our power here, we can go from uh, 10 watts, um, sorry, milliwatts, 100, 500, and all the way up to 1 watt, which is the flex version, which doesn't put it in 1 watt unless it has to. Um, so I'm going to leave it in uh, 10 milliwatts for now. The other thing we've got, interestingly, in this, and this is more of the module thing, if we go along here, We've got uh, a few interesting things. We've got a spectrum analyzer. Oh, to do that, we need to turn off the receiver. Hold on. Telemetry lost. Yes, I did on purpose. This is what the spectrum analyzer looks like. And we're kind of in the 890 and we've got 20 uh, millihertz either side. And you can go quite wide with that if you want to. You can go up to 40 megahertz and if we go down to I guess where we want to be so 868 would be where we are we can have a look at the sort of noise floor we've got there and if we go higher up we should see we've got some spikes on uh, what I would suggest is GSM I'm not sure I thought GSM was after 900 that one's on 890 anything else around something going on around the nines the 930s isn't there um i don't know how much use this is it's quite not nice to have i guess but generally speaking i i'm kind of gathering that unless you're using it wrong and you're on the phone network that uh, the sort of 868 is is quite clear i suppose other people flying on crossfire and stuff like that would have big spikes and things but anyway that's one of the things you can do 
The other thing we can check, and I've just switched back on the receiver for this because it's quite important, is you can actually check what version you're on now. Because previously we couldn't... Oh, one of the things I did as well was up, update to 231 to see if that would work, and it, and it didn't. If we go to modules and RX version, we should see now loss. that we've got a 112 Flex, and we've got two versions there. We've got 112 on the R9 Mini OTA, but it doesn't... It doesn't tell me what version we've got. I don't know why there's two versions. Is it that you can go back to one or that's the, the original one if you um, mess up the bootloader? So it tells you what version. It doesn't actually tell you that it's it's flex, for example, on the 112, which would be useful, but there you go. It's better than it was, um, but still not perfect, I would suggest. That's about it for how the module works or doesn't work. So let's actually get and try and fly this thing now. Okay, so we're ready for a flight. We've got the R9 here and obviously got the R9 ML Lite Pro here. And uh, we're gonna take this out for a flight. I haven't flown this yet. And if you watched the previous video about the Lull 5, that was the Maiden. So there'd be some repetition here, but I'm not sure how it's gonna go. Um, but for this, I intend to fly it first off with Flex just to make sure it's all going because don't forget I'm using 868 megahertz but I'm using antennas for 900 and that should probably give me some bad losses I'm not sure how bad though that's going to be the interesting thing so I'm going to use the available power to start with um, the, the problem with a, an antenna for 915 is it's shorter than the 868 so it's not like I can cut it down and make it work but I thought I'd try it and if I need to swap antennas over it will be fine we're not looking at a massive area here but a, a reasonable one for stretching a quad's legs like this so yeah let's see how it goes Here's the maiden flight I had, and if you've seen the review of the LUL5, you see I had this interference here because of the telemetry signal being sent back from the uh, R9MM. The reason I show this one now is because this was flying on 10 milliwatts. I'd actually meant to turn it up on the normal flex, but I ended up flying on 10 milliwatts. But it gives an interesting uh, point of view of the RSSI. This is RSSI on channel 16 which we're kind of just expecting to be okay. I'm used to flying the R9MM down to very low RSSI. Uh, and this one did drop off quite a lot. This, you know, not sort of 30 or 20 like the previous ones have done, but um, just, you know, enough to think, hmm, maybe I need to be upping the power or, or, or have the more power available. See as we go here. I mean, it's going off quite linearly, so as we go further away, it drops off, but drops off more than I would like. So, on this test, what I've done, I've turned off the telemetry. Uh, this doesn't stop, of course, the RSSI coming back through the channel, but I've got no actual proper telemetry from the unit itself. But this is what I need because of the Tarsier, it seems to be very badly uh, insulated from noise. And I'm using this on flex now, and we're going right to the edge of the field where I can go to, which is about 550 meters. And still on the turn, we get a bit of a drop, but generally speaking, the signal's good. That's not to say I can't do this with a 2.4 receiver and get pretty much the same situation. So in terms of real distance and how's it doing, it is another question. I sort of decided to, um, poke my head up here and, and go over in this direction uh, and maybe thought about going over here but I didn't like the way uh, it started falling off and I thought to myself actually I haven't got any GPS rescue back up here and we're getting RSSI in the 50s so ooh, I sort of backed off that and, and went back to the field but in terms of flying in a field 500 meters ish obviously we've got a very strong signal and everything's good but at the same time that's not exactly um, any sort of stress test or anything of the R9 at this point. But in this particular video is all I'm going to do. So mostly because I had so many problems getting the whole thing connected and issues with trying to do the flashing that uh, I'm going to save the actual pushing out further and seeing what we need to do for another video. So yeah, I need to end it there for now because I want to do a bunch of more stuff, but perhaps not on this quad. I mean, perhaps I'm being a little unfair about the amount it's dropping off, because don't forget, this is an antenna for 915, this is an antenna for 915, and I'm running 868 for it, which is not the thing to do. So perhaps that drop off in the RSSI was expected as we did the turn, 
but I'd prefer to have something where I've got some backup just in case it falls out of the sky. I want it to, I'd prefer it to come back again. I don't want to suddenly the RS side to drop and just lose the quad, especially in that area where it's hard to find. So what have we learned about the R9 M Lite Pro and it's accompanying R9 MM OTA receiver? Well, we've learned that th with this combination of this, this, and this, the whole OTA stuff doesn't seem to work at all and FreeSky have been a bit vague about why that is. Other combinations of hardware may work. I don't know where the problem is because I couldn't really get that out of it. I haven't got a clear picture on why OTA is not working on this. As soon as we get some sort of update or data blast from uh, FreeSky who may eventually tell me what the problem is and how they're fixing it, I will of course come back and test it out because I don't want to resolder any more receivers in and out again just to update the firmware. So in the meantime, I, I wanted to follow up further and do a bit more of a range test because we only got to 550 meters. It seemed pretty solid, but you know, it would be on 2.4 as well. Previously, last time I tested the R9 or Flex, this is my old R9 system, which I tested with the original R9M. This is the Tyro 129, uh, seven inch based quad. Uh, good for testing, uh, distance went plenty of uh, range on that one. So I've got another R9 MM OTA and I've just got this route post. This is the Tyro 119, which is exactly the same as the Tyro 129. It's just got shorter arms and uses six inch props, but it's got a GPS on it. So I can put the R9 MM OTA in there and use GPS rescue if there's a problem with me flying out of range. What I'm also gonna do in that one is use F-Port because lots of people have been saying, why aren't you using F-Port? So I wanna see what's involved with putting F-Port on, what sort of telemetry I can get back from the system, that sort of thing, uh, as a sort of more interesting thing. It also will confirm to me that the problem with that interference we were getting with the telemetry signal is because of this Tarze camera. I think it is, I'm pretty sure it is, but if I put that in, a quad with a regular camera and it doesn't have that problem. That will confirm that it's all about the Tarsia and having uh, R9 telemetry is not a bad thing. So I guess at this stage I'll have to say that the R9 M Lite Pro and potentially the receiver or the entire system is, as per usual, not quite ready yet. It seems like the stuff that should be working is not quite working and who knows. It just doesn't seem a very slick product. It, if you look at Crossfire, everything just works out of the box and it's very nice to to use. This takes a bit more effort. That's not to say I won't get there, but in terms of is this workable for you, take a look at the videos, have a look what I had to do to install things and see if it's for you. This and the receiver was kindly supplied for review by Banggood, so thanks to Banggood. And of course there will be links down below for where you can check this out in more detail. And as I said, I'll be back both with the test of F port on this new quad when I build it. And as soon as they fix OTA of whatever problem it is, I'll be back to look at that as well and see how that works and how easy slash difficult it may be. Until that time, I hope this has been useful and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.